How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to talk about index fund investing. In other words, most people these days, most savvy people like to do passive investing. Today, I'm going to talk about how this passive investing method is not as passive as you think it is, and it's not as diversified as you think it is. If you look all over the net, look on the news, look on the finance blogs, every single news outlet is saying that people are taking their money out of mutual funds, out of these actively managed portfolios, because there is some theory behind it. Because, you know, whenever they do actively manage, they, in a large sense, do not actually outperform the S&P 500. So it's really, really hard to do. And now hordes of people are just investing in this passive funds, something that has a low cost in the range of 0.03 to 0.05% every single year. And basically they just plop this money into an ETF fund. Now you gotta know, if you add up all the companies in the S&P 500, the market cap for these 500 companies is around $25 trillion. If you then go back and look at the passive investing funds, all the ETF funds that invest in the S&P 500, you'll see that the market cap of SPY is 0.266 trillion. IVV is 0.185 trillion. VOO is 0.459 trillion. And so this leads me to wonder, well, what if you add up all the passive investing, low cost ETF fund that's invest in the S&P 500. If you add all this up, how much of the market is actually passively invested? So if you go and dig around and look at this, there are various financial companies that already came up with this figure. Unfortunately, each source does not always agree with another, but you know, what I found is generally they say it's between 15 and 30% right now. For example, one article said that out of the total market cap of the U S stock market, right? This is huge. 25 trillion, 29% of this, they are all in passive ETF funds. So this is a significant amount. Frankly, it doesn't really matter exactly how many percent. We only need to know that, okay, it's hovering around 15 to 30%. So it's a large chunk of the total US stock market. So I wanna give this perspective that, let's say every single person in the US stock market only buy low cost ETFs. That means whenever someone sells, they're selling a basket of stocks, right? So it essentially ties all these stocks together. One whole US stock market becomes one single stock. But of course, right now, the stock market is not quite there yet. Only 15 to 30% is tied together, if this makes sense. So this is a very troubling issue here because all these stocks that are in these indexes, they're essentially correlated together. They are essentially tied together by the percentages that they are weighted in that particular stock index. So one of the main reasons for buying an S&P 500 is to get a diversified portfolio of 500 different stocks. But when you have 15 to 30% of the stock market in one single fund, they act in unison. You cannot just go on your brokerage firm and then go, oh, I want to sell, you know, some of these stocks within that index. When you sell one share of index, you're selling the entire index. So the point I want to make is, let's say you can buy a stock market index fund that has um, every single stock there is weighted the way it is today. So instead of 500 stocks, you have every single stock in the US stock market. But because 15% of it is highly correlated together, they're essentially tied together. 15% of this entire stock fund that you buy is actually one single stock. But when you look at the S&P 500, the highest weighted stock is actually only about 3%. So the troubling part here is that when you buy these stock market index fund, you're not being diversified because they are all being treated as one. And because they're so popular now, everyone treats the whole basket as one thing. So what I think you're seeing right now is actually a stock market bubble in passive investing ETF funds. They are essentially going higher and higher and it's actually a good thing to be in it because yeah, it pushes the price higher and higher. However, whenever there is a downturn, if, if a downturn comes, then when it does go down, it's going to be that much more volatile because people are going to get scared. The type of people that are invested in this type of fund probably might not have gone through the 08 boom or the dot com bus in 01. So most of these people, although they are being told that you should just passively invest, you should just keep on buying it and not really sell at any point. 
I feel that there will be a good percentage of them that will run for the hills whenever you see, I don't know, 30% market drop, 40% market drop, you know, you see the market drop a little bit at a time, you know, one week is 10% and then you have a long duration of these market drops, maybe six months, 18 months or something. And then after it hits you time after time, week after week, oh, it's gonna keep on dropping. And then you think that it's bottom out and then the next week it drops another 5%, another 10%. If the market keeps on doing this week after week and then you start to get worn down and you start to think, oh my gosh, the market really is, you know, this is the time where it's finally gonna go down forever. You know, it's gonna go down to 10%. There's no hope that it'll ever recover then you're gonna see a lot more people selling, just like how it's always been. People get scared, people sell, and then people always sell at the wrong time. So what are you gonna see in these low cost, uh, passive stock market index fund is that whenever something bad happens, it's going to emphasize this a little bit more. The volatility is gonna go up because people are holding these indexes. So what can you do to get around this? There's very little that you can do because I mean the S&P 500 holds 500 very, very popular and in demand stocks. And if you buy something outside of it, then you know, you're not gonna get as good a performance possibly if you try to buy a thing called a total stock market fund where instead of 500 they hold 2500 uh different stocks instead well you're still gonna have like one fifth of it that is part of the s p this is not to say that you should not buy anything within the s p it's just saying that this is how our market is now. It's just tied together a lot more than before. And this is something to watch out for going forward. So I think there's something to glean from this because if you think that the total stock market, 15% of it is just one single stock. Now, this framework will allow you to invest in it in a different way, possibly to make some money off of. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like, comment down below. Let me know if you think 15% of the stock market is just one single stock now. And as always, don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.